Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM20 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's season 12, episode 8, and today potentially is our penultimate episode at Gladbach, and it's a crucial one as well. We've got Bayern Munich first in the Bundesliga, that game actually not all that important in the grand scheme of things, and then away to Schalke in the German Cup semi-final, a chance to defend our trophy, just two games away from another title, and a chance to really stand out for some of the super clubs that have got a job coming up this summer. We've basically conceded the title, Dortmund have got four games left, they're 11 points clear, we can narrow the gap to eight today, but that isn't going to be enough. There's no way Dortmund are getting four points or less from their last four games. So as a result, and with the German Cup semi-final coming up in just three days against mid-table Schalke, we've made the difficult decision to rest people today. So you'll get to see a few members of the squad play today that you don't normally get to get much of an eye on. And hopefully, we'll be able to get a positive result still. Otherwise, off the pitch things going pretty well. We'll take a brief look at those that have been kept from the youth intake too. And then we've got to get on with these two games. Massive one, the second one. And the first one's against Bayern Munich. Certainly not an easy tie. But if you are looking forward to this episode and a crucial end to the season in the German Cup, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know in the comments how you think we'll get on. And subscribe to the channel for daily FM20 content, as well as a weekly stadium review series, two episodes a week from Cricket19, and a weekly live stream every Tuesday morning at 10am. Thank you all for your incredible support. Now let's go and have a look at our recent results. As you were with me last time for Champions League disappointment, we got beat by United in the 119th minute at Old Trafford, and we backed it up with a draw against today's second opponent, Schalke. We'll be needing to do better than that next time. Palika got both goals, and that was the end of his goal-scoring run. He's been on a bit of a goal drought since. So away at Wolfsburg, it was a 2-1 victory. Andrea Pinamonti with two more this season. 2-0 at home to Leipzig. Kennedy Abeng with a brace. One at the start, one at the end. And then away to Ingolstadt, it was a Wilhelmsen screamer in the second minute. And that is what's put us in good form into this one. So away to Schalke we go. We've of course got Dortmund on the last day, but there won't be much riding on it then. As our priority is now firmly on the German Cup and a trophy that we think we can win. So we've got a couple of injuries and a few players we're resting. But we've got to show Bayern Munich. Let's see if we can get a result. And then we'll focus on the German Cup. Let me very quickly take you through the youth intake. So you can see the players that have come into the under-19s. Not too many stars in truth. Not as good as previous years. There are some youth candidates there that haven't been signed. None of them expected to have more than two and a half star potential. But in terms of the ones that have come in this year. The best of those is definitely Stefan Holzig. He has come in as a 15 year old, one and a half star ability, was four star potential, now is four and a half. He's very good, so we might actually have a brilliant player out of this. An inside forward off the left, temperamental which we can improve and trade him very well. We might have another world class star on our hands there. And the same goes for Paul Frass, he's only got one star ability, but again his potential is now up to four and a half. He's not quite so good off the right wing. But definitely a good young player, and I'm sure with time, it will definitely improve. Last year's goalkeeper, Savinsky, he's now becoming a very good pro as well. So there's a lot of positives here. There's certainly players that could be promoted next year. The likes of Roger Zappi, the likes of Daniel Billing, both of whom we were signed as youngsters in the past. And in the first team now, Rolf Neumeyer starting to make an impact. He actually started his first Bundesliga game last time out in that 1-0 win against Ingolstadt and was brilliant. A key passer of the ball and a very good player in our attacking display. So there are positive signs, but let's crack into the first game today. The only thing we want to focus on is Bayern Munich. Can we get ourselves a result? Can we just stay on the outskirts of the title race? Only a win will do so. Bayern in better form than us, but both of us winning games in succession. And a few players having to get a rest. We're getting little alerts about Kawakita being jaded, so we've given him a complete rest from the squad. And we're also going to give him a one day rest from training now, just to make sure he's fit in midweek. Two days it looks like we're giving him. Pinamonti dropped to the bench, Palika the same, Wilhelmsen the same. We're just trying to make it as easy as possible. Anyone who's got below 96% fitness basically. And then if we're losing in the match or we're winning comfortably, Abeng and Jovanovic will be the two that are rested. On the more positive side of that, we have got a man back from injury in Oliveira. He's been out for a few games and Sommer will be fit for midweek. But there are a couple of positions where we're a little bit light. 
So it's Umberhan in goal for this first game today in the Bundesliga. Savalainen in at right back. Martinevsky in at centre half. The same job that he did away at United. Still the only time he's done it today. Vimmer at left back and Jovanovic making up the back four. Brucker comes in for a rare start. He's not played many since he's been here, but he is a young wonder kid, and I'm sure it'll do a good job for us today. He's alongside Jimenez in the middle. We've got Abeng, Vera and Bittle, the attacking midfield three. Andrea Pinamonti on the bench if needed. And Ed Seekins in up front. Not yet started a game since coming back, but we know we can trust him, and today's the day. So Ed Seekins in up front, and I'll tell you what, if he has a good one, he'll start in midweek as well. So let's go and get into it. It is Bayern Munich v Borussia Mönchengladbach. Let's see if we can get the result. It's 4-2-3-1 for the home side today. Lots of names we recognise. The left back's been there for ages. Newbell in goal. Bonte at centre-half. In fact, Newbell's just joined them in real life, I believe. Bonte centre-half. Tapiero and Legrand in the middle. Vidal up front. So many good players. And they've still got Vinicius Jr., the skipper over on the left wing. Obviously, the Real Madrid wonder kid in real life. And he's become some superstar in this game. But we've got good players as well. So let's get the lads out there proving a point. We'll drop to a balanced mentality. We don't want to try and dominate against Munich. They've had a poor season, so they may be off the boil. And let's hope that continues today. Jovanovic obviously playing against the club he came through at. So I'm sure that will give him a bit of extra motivation. And with five minutes gone, there's nothing to talk about. So let's see if we can get a result here. It's a corner kick for Bayern, less than 10 minutes on the clock, and it's Fetz to deliver. In swing him to the back post, down to Silva, Tapiero shoots, second time it's blocked, third time it's in. Awful defending. How can you let someone have three bites at a cherry? Savalainen got one block in, but it's been an awful start. And Bayern Munich dominating the shot count as well, so we might have to go back to positive. But for now it's Savalainen with a throw. Brucker loses it, really poor from the youngster. Finds Vidal. Vidal's charged past one. He's literally ran round with Martinevsky. Made it look so easy. And Umbahan makes the save. We've got to go positive because we're playing an unnatural style. And it really isn't suiting the boys. And we're not strong enough at the back to pull it off. We don't see the corner as the highlight ends. But Bayern's dominance continues. So we're going to demand more as it falls for Fetz on the right. 15 gone. And Bayern are dominant. This is like the best Bayern Munich. Legrand on the left. Cuts it in. Savaline and blocks. Out to tongue the left back. Legrand gets in there. Loses our shape completely. Silver down for Vinicius. And it's over the bar. Bayern Munich could be three up if they wanted to here. They've now managed nine shots already. And we're yet to threaten the Bayern goal. It's a throw on the right hand side. Savaline and to take. A lot of our boys looking anxious. And I'm not quite sure why. And I'm also not sure why we've gone all the way back to the keeper there. Umbahan out to Vimmer, the left back. Inside to Jovanovic. He finds Brucker. Not really got control of the game yet, but that's a good ball to Bittle. Finds Jimenez and now Vimmer. On the left-hand side, loses it again. Vard does do well to win it back, though. You've got to give him that. But Brucker, every time robbed in possession. What on earth's wrong with that kid? Silva's just run through the whole team and tapped in. Is he that good? I mean, is he that good? He is very good. But the fact that there wasn't even a challenge is really scary. And Felix Brucker has had a horror show so far. So we will drop to balanced and we're going to ask him to show passion. Because you know what? They've not even turned up today. And with three days to go to the cup semi-final, the last thing we want is to lose confidence. And maybe we've just stayed at Gladbach a bit too long as Vinicius just curls one in from 30 yards. I mean, it was a pretty feeble effort and it wasn't in the corner. Umberhan has to save it. I fear for midweek now. I really fear for what's going to happen here. The midfield has been non-existent. The defence, well, not really much at all. Oh, God. From the kickoff, Vimmer has lost possession. He's just stood there and waited to be tackled. Vinicius has skinned three of them. And Vimmer at half-time, I know I've given him the captaincy today, but he's not performed at all. And he will come off at half-time, as will Brucker. It's going to be a double change because we need to get something out of these boys. It has been a disgusting performance. Aggressively tell them they were awful. And it's all good reacting, but two of you ain't getting a chance. Brucker's being replaced. Sally Hassan will come on for him. At least we can rely on him to perform. And at left back for Vimmer, it's going to be Mauro Jelly. Let's get into the second half and hope we can limit the damage now. It's Bayern Munich coming forward again, though. No, Vidal picks it up to Tapiero. There's no pressure. This is a high-tempo, high-pressing side. And Bayern have got time on the ball in every area. Silver volley's over. But Vinicius had time to knock it down and find him. And there's nothing on him at all. Ed Seekins up front certainly won't be playing in midweek. He's not had much service, but he's looked anxious and he's not really put a foot in. 
Bayern Munich just playing round us. They're taking the mick here. Here's Silva to Fetz. Out to the right hand side. Inside of Silva again. It's all too easy. Switch have played a tongue on the left. A Beng's not even closed him down. Do I take a Beng off because he's the man who needs resting the most? I don't know. What a disgusting display it's been. It's been the worst we've ever seen. Let's get the analysis on. We were told to go to the tactics, but I'm not going to do it. What else can you say about this display? I mean, it's been so bad. So bad. Falls for Silver on the edge. Jovanovic's header not away properly. And Silver puts it in the corner for five. He took four touches on the edge of the box with no pressure at all. And I tell you what, there's bad displays and then there's disasters. Kennedy Abeng's coming off. Naimaya might as well come on. He's a young player. We'll give him some game time. He's not a right winger by any stretch of the imagination. But he can't do any worse than those who are on the pitch. So on he comes, 30 minutes to go. Let's see how many Bayern can get. Well, thankfully, we have had a quiet half an hour to finish. It is 4-0 to Bayern Munich. Gladbach slaughtered. And again, a bit like last season, our worst performance came on the eve of the cup semi-final. But this one was even more alarming. Definitely the worst defeat since we've been in charge. Definitely the worst performance. And now we go to Schalke in three days' time and we must react. Resting players has not paid off. The title race is over. And Leipzig could chase us down for second now. Not a good display. And it's really problematic. I mean, are we going to bounce back? Join me in three days to find out. We're back for the crucial game against Schalke in the German Cup. But I guess if there was ever a reason to make sure we left the club this summer, this is it. There's now takeover talks going on. And to be brutally honest, we can't be doing with losing out on summer transfers because of director of football transfer embargoes not being able to do the business he needs. So we're going to have to make sure this is our last season here if we can get a result. We need to make sure we overachieve to give ourselves a chance at a job. And what better way than to reach the cup final again? We go to a Schalke side that are in mid-table. We've had a team meeting with the lads. We've got the confidence back on board. And we're still in strong form despite that last defeat. We're back to our first 11. Everyone's fit today, with the exception of one of the young centre-halves. We've put a sub-goalkeeper on, which we don't often do because we want to make sure we're not left short. And this is the 11 we've gone for for the German Cup semi-final. It's Umbahan in goal. Martinevsky back out to right back. Vimmer at left back. Jovanovic and Kawaki to the skipper back in at centre-half. We've got Wilhelmsen and Sommer, the first choice central midfielders back. Obeng, Pinamonti on the left and Oliveira in attacking midfield. And Alexander Bittel on his own up front. Palika on the bench if we need him. He's been a super sub before. Let's hope he can do it again. Let's get into the German Cup semi-final. Schalke v Gladbach, who do you think comes out on top? It's 4-2-3-1 again. Both sides playing it. Seems to be by far the most common in Germany. A whole team of regens bar one. A young Turkish player. Is he a German Turkish? He's not. He's played nearly 100 times for Turkey. He's nowhere near as good as our squad. So we have to take positives from that. But we have to perform as well. It's all good being better on paper. What can we do on a football pitch? We're going to tell the lads to do it for the fans, just as was recommended by Rui Pedro Silva. I wouldn't say it's got the best reaction. We'll try and be positive in the tunnel interview. Of course, we will be going to our positive mentality. And let's see if we get a response from the last game. It's an early throw for Vimmer at left back. Finds Oliveira and now Wilhelmsen. Bringing it forward. Oh, he's lost it again. Brucker did that last game. It seems to be catching. And now Bittman's run through. We tried a cheeky off the ball foul. Thankfully, Bittman put it wide. But that's a worrying sign from one of our best players. Wilhelmsen robbed. And now Schalke on the attack again. Meyer on the left to Bittman, who had that early chance. Finds Azul. Back to Meyer again. They've got time on the wing to cross it, and it's back to us all to full back. Into the back post, Vargas down, and the keeper's beaten it his near post. What an awful time for your season to collapse, and what a time to produce your worst performances. Terrible defending, and despite having more shots, we're behind early on. But Phil Hamson with a free kick on the left, headed away, and look at the counter on here. We've got all of our men caught ahead of the ball. The defence is flat-footed. Martinevsky makes the tackle, but it falls for Azul. And it's a four-on-three in the middle. A Beng's beaten, and thankfully Azul's greedy. If he cuts it back, that's 2-0. But Umbahan gets a comfortable save. And it's Schalke again down this left-hand side. What on earth's going on? We're going to have to drop Martinevsky to a defensive duty. I mean, he prefers that anyway, but... Why is it turning up now? After such a good season to do this again. We're going to demand more. But we're getting outplayed. And it's another Schalke corner. Marcos in. Zajas heads over the bar. 
And this, again, a bit like the last game, it could have been three or four. It's Schalke again coming forward on the right. Weisner with the chance to cross. Goes back to Marcos. Into Zajas. Martinevsky heads away. Vera beats his man. Now can we counter? There's four up. The two wingers are in space. Vera coming forward. Finds Pinamonti. Been a top scorer all season. First shot saved. And Abeng puts the rebound in. Kennedy Abeng the youngster. His 17th of the season. And that is a classic Gladbach counter attack. Schalke won. Gladbach won. We don't deserve it at all. But can we now build on it? Schalke in possession in goal. A short goal kick. And they're playing it along the back, which isn't always recommended, but they've beaten the press really easily. A Ben gets back in, though. Goes to Kocu, the centre midfielder. Back to Sotalo, the centre half. And Schalke not finding their ball there, but they get it out to us all eventually. Here's Maya. Inside to midfield again. Good keeping our shape. Vera pressing, but it's not the right moment. And they've still got it at the back. But these long highlights normally lead to something, as Schalke go all the way back to their keeper. Zeni finds Sotalo. Out to the left back, Maya. Long ball forward, Zajas flicks on, and this is the one, isn't it? Bitman through, and it's been such a long highlight, it leads to something, but it's a wayward shot out for a goal kick. Still 1-1 one, one here, Schalke 1, Gladbach 1, and it's Schalke that are forced to defend now. A Ben gives it away, Wilhelmsen brought down, surely that's a foul. He must have been injured by that. Azul's going the length of the pitch, don't you dare concede. Azul in, it hits the post, Kawakita clears for a corner, and that had to have been a free kick. Wilhelmsen's now got the knock that we'll have to keep an eye on. It's a bruise shin, so he should make it to half-time. But as we were just coming back into the match, we've been pegged back a little again. And that's something that concerns us towards half-time. Hopefully in the second half, we can stay in it and then just get on top. It doesn't matter how we play. Last year's semi-final, we were awful on the back of an awful defeat. But we got the result, and that's what we need again here. So let's get the lads to dig in. Let's try and get a performance. And let's crack on with the second half here. Early doors in the second. It's Umbahan with the ball at the back. Finds Jovanovic and he goes up to Vera. Wilhelmsen wide to Abeng. Back into Vera. Abeng's running off him. He's in one-on-one. -on -one, has to score and does. The keeper gets a hand to it, but the shot was just too strong. And Kennedy Abeng on the right. The youngster has turned up on a big occasion again. It is two for Abeng, two for Gladbach. And Schalke have now got to fight back. Half an hour to go. We've picked up a knock with Sommer as well, apparently. And his performance has been worse as Schalke are forward down the right. Weisner back to Marcos. No pressure on him. Hits the post. The rebound. Great save, Umbahan. The defence, again, non-existent. Vimmer's had a poor game yet again. But we're just clinging on at the moment. It's Marcos who's going to deliver the corner. An outswinger to the back post. Umbahan claims brilliant goalkeeping. And now we've got to try and get a third. With a one-goal lead, I don't fancy us at all. And we've got a chance to double that lead. A Wilhelmsen corner. A Beng brings it down. Back to Jovanovic. Out to Wilhelmsen. It's a poor pass. He's been robbed and it's a long ball forward. Where's the defence gone? Bittman's one on one. Who's out there with him? It doesn't matter who it is. He's been beaten so easily. It was Marcus Wimmer again. Did not put a challenge in. That is some of the worst Sunday league defending you will ever see. And it's in a German Cup semi-final. Wimmer has collapsed in the biggest games of the season. We're going to have to make changes. Vimmer replaced by Jelly, and I've got to do both midfielders. Wilhelmsen's injured, Hassan will come on for him, and him and S for Sommer, who's been poor. 20 minutes to go, we need a response big time. It looks like we're going to extra time here. It's been a very even game, but the two goals we've conceded have been appalling. And we now go to extra time with tired legs. I don't know if we get another sub, we'll have to have a look. We'll say we're pleased with the lads. Can we take Bittel off? Can we get on Palika? We can. The fourth change is made and the super sub Palika's on up front. Can he deliver just one more time? Early on, Pinamonti loses possession. He's not had a very loud game either. Very quiet in this one. And his press is beaten again as Marcello finds Vargas. Man's charging forward but it's fallen to Bittman. Into the box again unopposed. It is so, so easy. Hassan makes a good challenge but it's still going to be a corner. We're going to drop Jelly to a defensive fullback as the wingers have tormented us all day. And we just need to get a goal from somewhere. Kennedy Abeng scored two. Can he maybe get a hat-trick? As Marcos delivers, umbahan has been brilliant with those. Delivers another corner. And with 20 minutes to go in extra time, it is still 2-2 here at Schalke. Marcos with a free kick. We conceded one like this against United. Jovanovic away as far as the edge of the box. Hassan challenges and clears. Can we get anyone out there? We can't. It falls for Weisner. Good pressure, but it's cleared away. And they've got the ball in the middle with Azul. Back to Castellazzi, into Bittman. 
Great turn and he beats a man into the box. There's no pressure. Bittman goes all the way. Umbahan saves, but where on earth has our defence gone? It is so, so easy as we go into the second half and one big push for passion because it just isn't happening. We're going to drop to balanced. We're getting tired towards the end. And the last thing I want is to get overrun. Jimenez loses the ball in the middle, but he gets there again, then loses it again. Why are we so slow in possession? We've got this higher tempo on and nothing is happening. Everything is so pedestrian. Malik nicks it. It's a good save by Umbahan. But we're going to lose this. There's just not the right fight there. There's not the right spirit. And even on penalties, do we fancy ourselves? Probably not, to be honest. We're in the last minute of extra time, though. Can we nick the most undeserved winner? Martinevsky crosses. Palika flicks on. Marcelo clears. And now Vargas can counter. They're running at a tired defence. They're running at a poor defence. Bittman's been left unmarked. That is awful defending. Where's the fullback? Martinevsky was caught upfield. As Umbaha makes another brilliant save. I've got him on a defensive duty. And he was on the halfway line. What on earth is he doing? I've no idea where the positional sense is coming from. I should probably be worried that they're not listening to our tactics at this point. We're going to ask them to be a bit more defensive and we're now holding on for penalties because in this game there's only one winner. In the last minute of stoppage time, Marcos crosses, Weisner heads wide and we're going to have the lottery of a penalty kick but my word, we do not deserve it. Surely it will go as soon as Umbahan takes this. Short to his centre-half, Kawakita, clears it long downfield, finds a bang. The two-time goal scorer, he's got his brace today, and that's the reason we're in a shootout. Pinamonti will go first, so Hassan will follow him in second, Kennedy Abeng in third, Jovanovic fourth, Palika fifth, Martinevsky sixth, Jimenez seventh, Jelly eighth, then Vera, Kawakita and Umbahan to wrap it up. It comes down to penalties for the German Cup final. Schalke go first, Marcos goes first, Umbahan can be a hero here. But he can't. It's right in the corner. The keeper's bottom right. And he had no chance of saving that one. Pinamonti, our only good goal scorer. He's been so reliable from the spot this season. And today, he is not. Zani tips it onto the post. And we're behind. And the only good penalty taker's missed. That is not a good sign. We don't deserve to win it. The confidence is gone. Bittman steps up. He makes it too. And unfortunately, that's going to be it for us. Schalke are going to be through. There is no way we come back. Sally Hassan to step up. I mean, what a disappointment this episode's been. How after the back of a good run, as Hassan scores, you can produce, forget the results, two performances like the ones we have. Really is just absolutely atrocious. Omer steps up. Umbahan doesn't get anywhere near it. Three good penalties and Schalke are on their way. Kennedy Abeng scored two in the match. We can't criticise him if he misses. He's the only reason we're here. Kennedy Abeng steps up and it's straight at a keeper. It is an absolutely awful penalty. The keeper did not have to move. And now, with four penalties to go, Schalke only need one to go their way. Mihalik steps up. Umbahan's in goal. Hasn't looked like saving one. And that means, unless he saves two, we're not going anywhere. Here he goes. Mihalik right-footed. It's in off the post. And Schalke are through, deservedly so. And we need to get out of Gladbach as quickly as possible. The takeover talk, those two performances have convinced me it's the end of the road. We've improved the league position, which is brilliant. We've overachieved. But the German Cup's a disappointment. The two midfielders injured again. And we need to get ourselves a big job in the summer. What a disgusting way to perform in the two epic games this episode. After such a brilliant season, it's all fallen away. And I feel like the lads have let me down a bit there. So let me know what you think in the comments. We'll be back for the final game of the season at Dortmund, probably giving them a guard of honour for their Bundesliga victory. And we will be furiously looking to see what jobs are available. So if you're looking forward to that, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know how it's all gone so wrong in this episode. Subscribe to the channel down below and turn that notification bell on. You'll get alerts as daily content releases on the channel. This one will be back on Tuesday with our final game at Gladbach. In the meantime, on Monday, we'll be playing the first game of the season with Dorking Wanderers following our big transfer special yesterday. We've got our stadium review series tomorrow as we focus on Portsmouth and Fratton Park. And on Tuesday morning before this next episode, we'll be live streaming at 10am. So if you are available, please do pop along. Finally, for this channel, my Cricket 19 career continued. That was earlier today at 1 o'clock. 
and the podcast channel is really thriving at the moment. There's loads of interviews with current and former professionals, weekly championship predictions, and plenty of other topical podcasts too. So please do pop over and say hello if you can. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you next time for what should be our final game with Gladbach. Can we go out in style or will this form lead to a bit of a whimper to finish? Mm -hmm.